What kinds of herbs were used in medieval cooking? Are they the same as used in modern European cooking? Were they ever used by a guy named Herb? These and other questions will be answered right after this. I'm Professor Jerome Arkenberg, and I've been teaching a wide variety of history courses at colleges across this country for the past 30 years. In this video, I'm going to tell you about the kinds of herbs available in medieval Europe, how various herbs were classified according to humoral theory. According to medieval physicians, the medicinal benefits and dangers of eating herbs and according to medieval nutritionist, how and when herbs should be eaten and why. But first, make sure to click like, share, and especially subscribe, and that little bell thingy, so I continue to bring you more great videos just like this one. Given the cost of spices, the peasantry and lower classes use herbs or vinegar as substitutes, especially dill, fennel, chives, parsley, and mustard. Though herbs were also widely used in cooking for the nobility and other upper classes. Anise. Anise appears as a seasoning in a variety of medieval dishes, especially fish and chicken. While sugar-coated, anise was one of the comfits eaten at the end of a meal in order to sweeten the breath and aid digestion. Medieval physicians classified anise as warm and dry, good against a cold stomach and flatulence, useful as a diuretic a laxative, and a means to generate milk in women. Basil, or is it basil? Basil is probably native to India, and since the Middle Ages has been a prime ingredient in Italian cuisine, where it was used fresh as dried, it loses most of its flavor. Keep that in mind next time I make a spaghetti sauce. Medieval physicians said basil was good for curing constipation, diarrhea, convulsions, deafness, and alleviating the pain of scorpion stings. Bay, or laurel, is native to the Mediterranean region and was widely used in the cuisines of Italy, southern France, and Iberia. Whole leaves the edges can be sharp enough to damage internal organs, but finely ground, they can be safely eaten, and so were often added to pottages. Borage, not to be confused with borat. Borage is native to the Mediterranean and was used for making green sauce and pottages in medieval Germany as a filling for ravioles in medieval Italy, for flavoring pickles in medieval Poland, and as a salad green in medieval Spain. Capers. Capers, native to the Mediterranean region, its bud was a main ingredient in medieval Italian cuisine, especially in the south and Sicily, and put in salads, meat, and chicken dishes. Also, pasta sauces. Its leaves, dried, can also be used as a substitute for rennet in making cheese. Good to know. Caraway. 
caraway seeds were added to meat and fish dishes, especially in Central Europe, where it was put in stuffing, cheese, and rye bread, and also eaten candied at the end of a feast. Physicians prescribed it as an aid to digestion for its supposed heat and dryness. Chervil. Chervil, native to the Caucasus Mountains, related to but more delicately flavored than parsley, was commonly used in medieval France to season mild flavored dishes, especially poultry, seafood, pottages, and sauces, and added just before serving. Chives. Chives are the only plant native to both the Old and New World. Interesting. They have been cultivated in Europe since the 5th century and were widely used across medieval Europe in both pottages and fish dishes. Dill. Dill was used throughout medieval Europe, but was especially popular in medieval Germany, with both its leaves and seeds used. Medieval physicians classified it as moderately warm and dry, and recommended it for people of a cold and moist disposition. It was also useful, they said, against stomach flatulence. Elderberry. Elderberry has a long tradition in European cookery. While its berries were usually turned into deep red fruit mousses, its flowers were used in fritters that were especially popular in medieval Britain. Fennel. Fennel was cultivated in Europe throughout the Middle Ages, especially sweet fennel with the stalk frequently added to vegetable and meat dishes, and the seed dried, sugar-coated, and eaten as a breath freshener or comfort at the end of a meal. It was classed by medieval physicians as dry and warm, and said to be good for the eyes, for the movement of the bladder and bowels, for the flow of milk in women, and for those with cold complexions. Hawthorn. Hawthorn flowers were sometimes used in solids or in almond milk porridges. Also known as Maytime, it traditionally played an important role in European literature as a sign of the arrival of spring. Honey. In the Middle Ages, honey was commonly used in sauces, purees, gingerbread, food preservation, many confections, and medicines. Medieval physicians described it as moderately warm and dry, a mild diuretic and laxative, especially recommended for the elderly and those with a cold temperament. While some medieval physicians thought that inebriation could be avoided by consuming honey after drinking wine. I have to remember that. Try it out. Horseradish. Native to the Balkans and the Levant, in the Middle Ages, the root of the horseradish was used to make a sauce to accompany various meat dishes, especially roast beef, in Germany, Scandinavia, and England. In Poland, it was also used as a common accompaniment when mixed with beets, and they're called shrun, for boiled eggs and ham, which I have personally had. And though the physicians, the medieval physicians don't say much about it, you want to clear out your sinuses, have some shrun. Juniper. Juniper berries from the juniper tree were used in ancient Egypt, Greece, and Rome 
as a cheap substitute for pepper and were particularly used across medieval Europe to give game and wild fowl a sharp flavor, while also to season pork, cabbage, and sauerkraut dishes in Central Europe. Lavender. Lavender, native to Europe and the Mediterranean region, was used in the Middle Ages as a coloring agent for food and also as a flavoring agent in salads and pastries. Love it. Native to much of Europe and the Middle East, in medieval cuisine, its leaves were used as a herb in pottage, its roots eaten as a vegetable or grated for use in solids, and its seeds as a spice, similar to fennel, especially in the cuisine of Italy, Spain, and southern France. Mellow. Mellow was known and used by the ancient Celts and Germans, and later in medieval Europe as a leaf vegetable in salads, and to flavor meat in fish dishes. Later, combined with sugar, it was the main ingredient in marshmallows. Bet you didn't know that. Marjoram. Marjoram, native to Cyprus, was used in the Middle Ages for seasoning pottages and sauces, especially in the cuisine of France and Provence. Mint. Mint was grown across medieval Europe, is used as a seasoning in dishes ranging from boiled beef to mint sauce. It was also rubbed on teeth to fight bad breath. Hmm, interesting. Medieval physicians classified it as extremely warm and dry in nature, especially useful to warm the stomach and aid digestion. Mulberry. The black, red, and white mulberry tree was widespread across the Mediterranean region and produced berries which were used in the Middle Ages as both a coloring agent and in desserts. Mustard. Mustard grew in abundance in medieval Europe with the first commercial production of mustard sauce in 14th century Dijon, France. Amazing. Frequently eaten together with meat and sausages, mustard was classified by medieval physicians as extremely hot and dry in nature, useful against excessive phlegm in the body. Myrtle. Myrtle is native across the northern Mediterranean region, whose fruit, a round blue-black berry, whole or ground, was used as a savory for pork dishes, for which it was especially useful as a pepper substitute. Oregano. Oregano, native to the Mediterranean region, was used in the Middle Ages primarily in dishes of southern Italy, Sicily, and Iberia providing a complex of taste ranging from spicy or astringent to sweet, and best when dried. Parsley. Parsley was by far the most popular herb in medieval Europe, and was a principal ingredient in herb omelets, green sauces, pickles, and many other dishes. It was also in common use as a garnish, as many restaurants still use today. Medieval physicians classified it as moderately warm and dry, describing it as useful for generating good blood, urine, stool, and menstrual flow. 
It was also considered especially useful for old people and those of a cold and moist disposition. Poppy. The wild poppy was domesticated in Europe between 6,000 to 3,500 BC, producing not just opium, but also edible non-narcotic seeds. The latter, in the Middle Ages, was used as both a coloring agent and a topping for a variety of breads, pastries, and desserts in Germany and Poland. Also, as a pastry filling in Central Europe, or ground and mixed with honey, as a type of candy in Eastern Europe. Roses. Rose petals, both fresh and dried, were used in medieval Europe to make jams, to flavor sweet and savory dishes, to distill rose water, to boil into a fragrant syrup, and to perfume water for hand washing at table. Medieval physicians praised roses for their power, they said, to heal eye diseases. Not to be confused with rose is rosemary. Rosemary is an aromatic evergreen shrub native to the Mediterranean and Asia, whose leaves have a bitter, astringent taste that complements many cooked foods. In the Middle Ages, rosemary was used to flavor stuffing and roast lamb, pork, and chicken, especially in Italian cuisine. It was also associated with medieval wedding ceremonies, and physicians asserted it was useful for improving the memory. Now, if only I can remember to take it. Rue. Do not rue the day. And you mistaken this. Rue, native to the Balkans, was extensively used for its bitter flavor in the cuisine of ancient Syria and Rome, and also in medieval Italy in a variety of eggs, cheese, and fish dishes or mixed with damsons and wine to produce a delightful meat sauce. Sage. Sage was grown and used across medieval Europe, not just for sages, as a favorite herb for fish, fowl, and various sauces. Classed by medieval physicians as moderately warm and dry, it was thought good for calming both stomach and nerves. Salt. Salt used since time immemorial and necessary for life. Remember, if you have no salt in your diet, you will die. Salt has been the most important seasoning for food. Before canning and refrigeration, the most important way of preserving food was by dry salting it or curing it in brine, especially for meat, fish, fowl, and some vegetables like cabbage. But the high salt content of many preserved foods meant that food normally had to be soaked in water, usually almost for a day at the least, before cooking to remove excess salt while cooks had to be extra careful not to oversalt dishes. Classified by medieval physicians as warm and extremely dry, salt was recognized as both an appetite stimulant and an aid to digestion. Good for the peasantry and lower classes, but especially bad for the nobility and upper classes. When consumed in high quantities, it was said to dry out the body, burn the blood, darken the face, harm the eyes and the brain, hurt the limbs, remove necessary moisture from the stomach, and make the whole body itch. Yeah.
Savory. Savory was native to the Mediterranean region, and with its strong, spicy flavor, was used in the Middle Ages to flavor dishes involving mushrooms, beans, and chicken. Sorrel. Sorrel, native to Northern Europe, with its sharp, pungent taste, similar to the crab apple, was used throughout Central and Eastern Europe in pottages and sauces, or in England and the Low Countries as a sauce to accompany eel or sausages. Picanard, or nard, is native to the Himalayan region, but has been used in the Mediterranean region since biblical times, mostly as incense or oil, though the Romans used it to commonly flavor a variety of dishes. Medieval Europeans also used it to flavor a variety of dishes, and especially Hippocras. Paragon. Paragon, widespread throughout ancient and medieval Europe, and especially used in medieval and modern French cuisine, was often added to chicken, fish, and egg dishes. Excuse me, do you have the thyme? Thyme, used by the ancient Egyptians for embalming, the Greeks for incense, and, the, for, and by the Romans to flavor cheese and wine, in medieval Europe, it was a common ingredient in a variety of meat, fish, and chicken dishes. Medieval Europeans also believed that, placed beneath a pillow, it would ward off nightmares and bring courage to its bearers. Somebody should try this and let me know. Violet. Violets were added to pottages of pot herbs, to salads and omelets, or to color creamy dishes such as blanc manger and various puddings. Medieval physicians prescribed violets for cleansing the gall and violet oil for cleaning the eyes. Let me know what you liked about this video and what other historical topics or subjects you'd like to see in future videos in the comments section below. Be sure to click like, share, especially subscribe, as it will help me bring you more great videos. And click on that little bell thingy so you'll know when the next History Waits for No One video is posted. If you want to know more, there are recommended studies on this topic in the description below, along with other ways to connect with me. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the past.